Okay, on this one, if you read the question, we are looking at one ounce fun size candy bars. They take a sample of 25 bars and they get the mean weight for those 25 bars. What is the point estimate? Well, the point estimate is going to be the sample mean. Okay, and what is that? Well, here's our interval. So the mean would have to be right in the middle of that. So I added them up and divided by 2 and you get 0.995. So that would be the average weight for those 25 candy bars. Okay, what's next? So what is the margin of error? In other words, what do we have to add to this average to get our confidence interval? Well, 0.995 plus 0 0.003 would get me to 0 0.008. So the margin of error must be 0 0.003. That's what we added to that to get this, or subtracted to get the other side. So that is our margin of error. Okay, what's next? How do we say this confidence interval? We are 90% confident that the interval from 0.992 to 0.998 captures the true mean weight of the fun size candy bars. That's how you say it. And how do we say the confidence level? So if we did this process many, many times, taking 25 candy bars over and over and over and over again, and getting these confidence intervals, something like this, well, 90% of them would capture the mean weight of what we think the candy bars are. So that's the confidence level, something along those lines, where we do this thing over and over and over again, 90% of those confidence intervals we make will contain the true mean weight. Okay, number two. We are looking at what? Flashlights. Now, they say check the conditions. So what we're talking about is random. Do they say that they take a simple random sample somewhere in the problem? And yes, it's right here. They select a simple random sample of 20 stores, so random is taken care of. Now the next part is normal. How do we determine if it's normal? Well, we're taking an average here, so x bar, a sample at each store. But here's the problem. They only take 20 stores. We need at least 30 to determine that it's normal. So unless they give us more information in the problem, which they do not, we can't really assume that it's normal. And then the next one is independent. What do we need for independent? So we need to know that the population size is at least uh, 10 times bigger than our sample size, which is 20. So we would need to assume that there are at least 200 stores total in this chain of stores. And that, I think, is fairly reasonable to assume. Let's look at letter B. So letter B is, instead of looking at a 95% confidence interval, what about a 98% confidence interval? So the way I think about it is, well, here's 95. We're looking at a confidence interval that's like this wide for 95% of our data. So our interval would go from here to here. Here's our middle we add our margin of error on either side, right? Well, if we go to 98, that's going to give us more of that data over on either side, making our interval wider, okay, for 98%. So it's a wider interval, okay, um, more confidence that we're going to capture that true mean. Okay, let's look at uh, letter C. So if we think about a sample mean and we get the new standard deviation is remember it's the old standard deviation um, divided by the sample size which means if we are dividing by a bigger number larger sample size 
this fraction actually is going to be smaller. It's an inverse proportion. So the larger your sample size, the smaller your standard deviation is for that sample. So it's going to, what, make the confidence interval narrower. Okay, there's that. Okay, let's look at this one. Now, we're looking at a random, ooh, simple random sample of 1,100 males, 12 to 17, who play these role-playing games. 775 said that they did. Okay, we're going to do a 95% confidence interval. State the parameter. Now, parameter is talking about the population. And what are we looking at? We're looking at a proportion. So we want to know the, the parameter is the proportion of people, 12 to 17 males, that play these games with a 95% confidence. Okay? That's the parameter. We want to know the proportion of males, 17, 12 to 17, that play these games. Let's go to letter B. Letter B talks about... Let's look at the conditions. When they talk about the conditions, it's random, normal, and dependent. Is it random? It says it right here, simple random sample. So that's good for random. Normal, that's the one where... We're going to take the 775 out of 1100, so 775 divided by 1100, and I think that's 0 0.70, uh, pretty close to 0.70, it's 0 0.704, anyway, and we multiply that by our sample size, which is 1100, is that number bigger than 10? And then of course the other one, which is 30, and multiply it by 1100. Is that number bigger than 10? That establishes normal for this proportion. In independent, we have to say, is our population of gamers 10 times bigger than 1,100? And that is safe to say yes. Let's go to letter C. So, what is our critical value for a... 95% confidence interval. So if you use inverse norm, so if you think about it, what we did today, 95%, what's on either side? 2.5% and 2.5%, right? Because we have 95% in the middle, which means what number do we put in or inverse norm. Well, we got 2.5% and 95%. So we go all the way out to, uh, what is it, 0.975 for our inverse norm. And that tells us our critical value. And the critical value is going to be 1 1.96. 1.9. Six, pretty close to two standard deviations, but not quite. Okay, so that's the critical value. And then standard error is just a fancy word for the um, standard deviation. Okay, so that's good to remember. And then what do we do for that? Let's see, what was it? It's this thing, right? So it's 0.70 times 0.3 times 0 0.3. Divided by, what, 1100, and take the square root. So that's going to be our standard deviation. So that equals 0 0.0138. So let's see, what do we got? How do we do the 95% confidence interval? So we're going to start with 0 0.7, right? plus or minus our critical value, 1.96, multiplied by 0 0.0138. Okay, and we come out with a couple of numbers for that. What is it? And of course, how do we interpret the confidence interval? Well, let's see, we are 95% confident 
that the true proportion of 12 to 17 year old young men that play these online games is somewhere between 67% and 72% for this population. Bam! Done. Okay, this one's a little bit different. Suppose we want plus or minus 2%. So 0.02 is going to have to equal all that stuff. The critical value times the standard error. So 95% gave us a critical value of 1.96 and we're going to multiply that by the standard deviation which was 0.7 times 0.3, and kind of rounded that, I don't know if that's right or not, but anyway, there's that. So we would have to do a bunch of algebra to solve this thing for n. Let's see, what would that look like? So we start with this, we divide both sides by 1.96, then we square it, okay? Then we multiply those two together, and then get n by itself. And you should get 2019 when you solve for n. 2019. So see if you can do that. Just unpack this thing. I think you could do that, doing some algebra, undoing all that stuff. Now, if you wanted to have a margin of error, two percentage points with a 99% confidence interval instead of a 95% confidence interval, would your sample have to be larger or smaller or the same size? Well, 99% confidence interval right here. So the inverse norm, what are you going to put? So it's, wow, it's way out there. So your inverse norm is going to be 0.995. And I think you get, let's see, so inverse norm. 0.995. So your critical value is going to be 2.57, I think. I don't have my calculator with me. So instead of this 0.196, we're going to have this number. It's a bigger number. So this value here is going to have to be larger to get a smaller number overall to multiply this bigger number to get the same value. Whoa, that's a lot. Okay. Okay, on this one, letter H, we could talk about uh, ooh, under coverage. So if they do it by email, so here's the thing. This is not an online game. Okay? Um, it doesn't say that. It's just a role-playing game. So people could get together at somebody's house and play this game has nothing to do with the computer. So in other words, the undercoverage could be well, we're only conducting this survey from people that play this game and also use a computer quite a bit. So I think it's a stretch, but that's how you would have undercoverage on this. You don't get everybody who plays this game.